welcome to Roll 1 D2 Games and to celebrate the channel hitting 7,000 subscribers, I'm going to be teaching you all the history of Crusader Kings 2. Originally published in 1994 by Activision, Crusader Kings was met with commercial and critical failure with around 3,000 units sold. It was this time Swedish-Japanese publisher Poradox was established. Looking to acquire a strong foundation for their new company, Poradox reached out to Activision, and in 1997 they acquired the Crusader Kings license for US$12,250. The publisher quickly began work on their first product, Sengoku, a Japanese-themed tea simulator as a nod to their heritage. Based on the Crusader Kings technology, the game was an instant success in Japan, and won the 2001 Akihabara Award for Technical Innovation. Ponchi Janayo Konsome Panchi Masagaki Teru Konsome Panchi Panchi Didenki Konsome Panchi Their first major change was rebranding from their Swedish name of Poradirks to the name Paradox, derived from the Greek words para meaning map and dox meaning simulator. In March 2007, Crusader Kings 2 Season 1 Episode 1 was released, but unfortunately was banned within the EU and 12 South American countries for its non-standard portrayal of the Catholic Church. Later that year, on December the 25th, Paradox released Crusader Kings 2 Season 1 Episode 2 Basque Beard Pack. The release was a major success for Paradox within Europe, shipping 500,000 units on release, and winning Gamescom's Basque Game of the Year award. With a new lease of life, the company began working on a secret project, which in 2008 was revealed as Crusader Kings 2 Holy Fury. Holy Fury was touted as the greatest game potentially ever released, and to maintain hype for the project, Paradox announced that in the run-up to Holy Fury, they would release weekly development diaries, or dev diaries for short, aimed at showcasing the most innovative features of Holy Fury, such as this button, or this button here. The feature they were most proud of though was this new interface, as it was sure to confuse new players and veterans alike by moving around information that had been found in the same place since the original release of Crusader Kings 2. As of today, almost 10 years since the original release, and 487 development diaries later, Paradox have assured their fans that a release date for Holy Fury is just around the corner. Hype for the expansion has reached an all-time high with YouTubers such as Arum Bar, Markiplier, and Roll2 Games creating new and exciting Crusader Kings content in celebration of the upcoming announcement of the reveal of the release date for the pre-order of Holy Fury. Crusader Kings 2 is sure to be the game of a generation. Looked back on fondly with a tear in my eye as my horse chancellor is beheaded by Aztecs on the banks of the Thames. I hope this video has taught you everything you needed to know about Crusader Kings 2 and if you have any comments and queries regarding the property, be sure to leave a comment below so I can ignore it. And of course, thank you for subscribing. I never thought we would hit 7,000 subscribers. This is a, a, an unprecedented milestone. When I first set off in Tamriel all those years, all those months ago, it was May. Okay, when I started off in Tamriel in May as the legendary Elrang, I never knew what a journey we would go on together as a community because that's what we are. We're in this together. If I die, you die with me. And that's all that matters. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned many things with me here today. Um, that's basically it. I don't, I didn't, I didn't plan an outro. I didn't script it. I didn't script any of this video, and I especially didn't script the outro. Um, back me on Patreon. Otherwise, we do die together.